Well, hello, welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm making something completely out of the box for me. I'm making a birthday cake for my five-year-old granddaughter, Annabelle, and the birthday cake isn't out of the box, but the decor is. I am making a rosette cake for the very first time, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna video this and sink or swim, we're gonna do it together and see how easy it actually is. I'm starting with my buttercream frosting, and I'm using two sticks of salted butter. Salt is called for in the recipe, and I found that the salt in the salted butter is the perfect amount, so I don't have to add any. I use salted butter in just about everything, and to me, it just tastes a lot better. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cream this butter. That is perfect. And by the way, I did let my butter sit out on the counter for just a bit. Into the butter, I'm adding four cups of powdered sugar. I'm not gonna sift it. Some recipes say sift the sugar. Listen, I'm all about easy and I am all about not washing any more dishes. <laughs> now that is four cups. And I didn't use my stand mixer for this. I'm probably gonna regret this, but I don't have a clear bowl for you to be able to see. So I wanted you to see the transformation. Now, since I'm not using my stand mixer, I'm about to make a mess. I'm gonna have powdered sugar everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is take my towel and for the first little bit, I'm gonna cover it up and this is gonna keep that powdered sugar from going everywhere. And again, more cleanup that I don't wanna do. Here we go. Next time, I can assure you, I will either do one of two things. I will use my stand mixer or I will get a larger bowl. <laughs> Okay, I told you we'd sink or swim together. Now this is a little thick and I've got some clear vanilla and I'm gonna add about a tablespoon to this. I want lots of flavor. I'm not measuring, I'm eyeballing. And there we go. If I find that my frosting is still a little thick, I'll add some milk and I'll loosen it up, but I have a feeling this is gonna work good. So, here we go. Well, <laughs> I'm done. Now, I am just gonna scrape this. I'm not adding any more liquid to it yet because I still have to add the star ingredient and that is purple food coloring. Annabelle is all things purple. That is why I have got on my purple shirt today in honor of her. She likes pink, but she loves purple. And I'm not adding the purple and mixing it with my mixer because it's going to be messy. I'm going to start with about a teaspoon and I'm going to fold this in. And when I make colored frosting, I really like the swirls that the food coloring adds. You don't have to worry about being perfect. And if you're brave enough to use your mixer for this, by all means, go for it. Actually, I have a lid for my mixer, but I never use it. Why? Because I don't wanna wash another dish. What is the matter with me? <laughs> I definitely seem to have a problem there. This is looking good. Look at that. Now, I can tell I want it just a little darker. So I'm gonna go in with a few more drops of food coloring and get it to the color that I want. Make sure that you pull from the bottom when you're doing this so that you can get all of that frosting. Now, 
Let me have a taste. Mm, that is good. If you like a really, really sweet frosting, then by all means, use unsalted butter. Don't add the salt and you will have it so sweet you can hardly stand it. Okay, well, I have a little bit of a mess to clean up before we move on. I'll see you when this is done. Clean, all things done. Hey, I love Clorox wipes. I don't know about you, but to me, they're one of my best friends in the kitchen. Now I have a pastry bag. These are so easy to find. As a matter of fact, you can buy them at the Dollar General now. They've got a great little selection of cake decorating tools there. If you don't have a pastry bag, use a Ziploc bag. They work wonderful. Believe me, I did it for years. Now, I have this tip. I don't know what the name of it is. It's kind of a star tip or I don't know. I got the one that has the biggest opening because I felt like it would be the most forgiving of all the tips. We shall see. Now, I'm putting this inside my bag and I'm working it down. I have a pair of scissors and what I'm going to do is, see this? I'm just going to turn and that takes it right off. Done with those. Now, I've got a little solo cup and this is going in. And you know what we're going to do. Here's what I'm doing. I found that when I frost cupcakes, using smaller amounts is definitely better. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. Now, let me get the cake. We gotta have something to frost, don't we? Be right back. Annabelle loves chocolate. So, I've made her a chocolate cake. Make whatever you like, but that happens to be her favorite, I know. And I've taken some tape and I just curled the tape up and I put it on my cake plate because I'm using a cake board and I don't want this to slide everywhere when we're decorating it. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of frosting and put it on my cake plate and this is going to help keep the cake from sliding all over. Now I'm putting crumb side bottom that's important and these cakes have been in the refrigerator so they're already nice and cool and that's going to help because i'm making a crumb frosting right now and i'm not going to have to let this sit for very long because as i said my cake is cold and it's gonna cool that frosting off really fast. Again, I'm putting the cut side down. Now you can make this however many layers that you want, but I will say you're gonna need more frosting. And hopefully I'm not gonna need more frosting. We shall see. And last but not least, I've got my last layer. Now, I am putting this crumb side up for this one because I want the nice flat surface. You don't need a whole lot. This is just basically kind of think of it as a primer coat when you're paint, painting. And since this cake is dark, I definitely want to cover up the chocolate. No, honey, no bark. Okay. Now, that 
little spoon. And that goes right back in. And I have a little bit more frosting here. And that will go into my bag once I'm finished using what I've got. I'm not worried about it being a little lopsided. If I were only frosting this cake and not adding the rosettes, that would trouble me. I would really work hard to make sure <laughs> that this is just right. But the reason I chose the rosette is because I think it's going to be very forgiving. I'm going to go put this in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes and we'll get started making those rosettes. All right, let's see if we can do this. One of the things that I wanna do before I start decorating is making sure this comes out really nice. Yes, it does. Now, let me see if I can do this and allow you to see it. I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm starting in the middle. And there we go. I've got my first one. And, whoops, you know what? That's okay. Like I said, sink or swim. I hope we're gonna swim today. And again, starting in the middle. Looks like I need some practice. <laughs> Hopefully by the time I finish this cake, it's gonna be a lot easier. And I'm taking my hand, see this? And I'm just pressing pretty hard on the top. So again, there we go. work and as you can see I'm taking my other hand and I'm pressing too both hands we're learning as we go no I need no bark that's looking good look at the difference between my first one and as I go definitely is getting easier. And I think that my frosting is loosening up a little bit from the warmth of my hand. That's helping as well. Let's see. Ooh, definitely got some gaps. And I'm gonna fill that. Watch, see that? Just shoot some frosting right in there. That is why I chose this particular design for my first try. Just looks so forgiving. Okay, now I'm going to come in and put some smaller rosettes right there. See that? They don't have to be exact fill the gap. That looks good. All right. Let me look at this. Okay, this side is lower. So I'm going to start on this side and use more frosting. Make it just a little bit higher and see if I can't get this even. And So much easier to make on the top than the side. I think that the different size rosettes give it more character. At least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> this is great. I think I found a new favorite. Well, I'm not 
not sure what size cake pan this is, maybe a six inch, I believe. And I would definitely double the recipe if I were making a bigger cake. But I do have enough left over to clean these sides up a little bit. This just looks a little meh. So I'm gonna just swirl this right down at the bottom. Just kind of bring the cake to the bottom of the cake pan. And I'm just, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm flicking my wrist, kind of like cursive writing. And I'm holding it really close to the board. I found that that, again, makes a difference. This looks so good. Oh, I know Annabelle is going to love it. Her birthday party isn't until tomorrow, so I will put this in the refrigerator and I want this frosting to sit up really nice. And I do have some left over when I add her candles. If I'm not quite sure about the placement of them and I wanna redo them, I'll have a little bit of frosting that will help me if I mess something up. And I also have these little roses and I've got some purple roses, baby's breath, all kinds of stuff. Annabelle's middle name is Rose, and she absolutely loves roses. I love flowers, and I'm so glad she shares that. So here we go. My very first rosette cake. I can see where I can improve on some things, but hey, we did this the first time together. I know Annabelle's gonna love it. You are a blessing to me. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for suffering through my mistakes on this. I hope you'll try it. I can't wait to do it again. My husband's birthday is right around the corner. I'm not sure that he'll want the rosettes, but anyway, it's another great cake to work on. I hope you have a blessed day. Thanks so much. This is going in the refrigerator. Happy birthday, Annabelle. I'll see you next time.